and welcome to Easy Exposure, the tutorials about photography. And this lesson is about photographing the moon, since a lot of you were asking me about that. So in this tutorial I will tell you what will you need to photograph the moon and also what camera settings to set. And at the end you will have a short Photoshop tutorial as a bonus. So let's get started. The timing is important for photographing the moon. You know that you don't get a full moon every single night. Also, you want the sky to be clear. Use a tripod. You want to avoid any camera shakes so your moon is as sharp as possible. Even if we want to use a really slow exposure, you will still want to use the tripod because we're going to use a long telephoto lens. And to get the best sharpness with this lens and also um, focus with this lens is easier with a tripod. Cable release is also a good idea. If you don't know how to use the cable release, uh, please watch my video about night photography. As I already said, to photograph the moon you will need a telephoto lens, at least uh, 200 millimeters or longer. It all depends on the timing. Sometimes the moon is closer to Earth and it's bigger and sometimes it's further and it's smaller. So this is the picture I got with my Nikon 80 to 400 millimeters and I was shooting this picture at 400 millimeters and you can see moon didn't fill up the frame in this case. This is the same picture but I cropped it in the post-production so you can also shoot uh, the moon with a shorter lens and then crop uh, in post-production but of course it's better you can get better details with a longer lens. Because we see moon during the night, you might think that photographing the moon is like photographing a night scene with a slow shutter speed, long exposure, but this is actually not true. Because the moon is not a light source by itself, but it's lit by the sun, we can apply sunny 16 rule, which is a basic daylight exposure. So, your starting point can be Sunny 16 rule, and I have a video, separate video about Sunny 16 rule if you want to watch it, if you didn't see it yet. So, based on Sunny 16 rule, you will use ISO of 100, F16, and shutter speed will be 1 over ISO, which can be, if your ISO is 100, it can be 1, 1 25th of the second. But very often this exposure can be a little bit too dark for a moon. So if you take a picture and it's too dark, try to use f11 or f8. Some people even call this rule Looney 11 or Looney 8 rule. And this is pictures I took with different exposure. As you can see, at f16 moon is a little bit too dark. And this picture is at f11 and this one at f8 which I think came out the best. So just try different exposure experiment, you know what your starting point is and then you can adjust from there. Also while you're taking pictures of the moon you will need to use a manual focus. You can also try to focus in live view if your camera has a live view, it's easier to zoom in in live view and you can see better if you're getting some details of the moon. And I think your focus will be around infinity, maybe a little bit less or past the infinity. Another fun thing to do while photographing the moon is to experiment with white balance. Try to take pictures of the moon on different white balance settings and you will see you will get a moon of different colors which can be a really cool effect. So here are some examples of the moon with different white balance. 
This one was taken on outer white balance. As you can see, it's kind of black and white, a little bit boring. Here is daylight white balance, which made moon yellow. And here is a shade white balance, which made moon even more brighter yellow. As you can see, the tungsten white balance made moon blue. And fluorescent white balance made moon slightly purple. And for those who don't know what the white balance is and now how to change it in your camera, please watch my white balance video if you haven't seen it yet. I know a lot of you have this question in your head, but how do you take a picture of the nice big detailed moon and some really nice lit night scenery? But think about that. That exposure for the night scenery is a long exposure, an exposure for the moon based on basic daylight exposure because moon is lit by the sun. So those exposures are different. When you, for example, expose for the moon, your night scenery will be too dark. And when you expose for your night scenery, your moon will be just a bright circle without any details. So the way to do it is to do two different exposures, one for the moon and one for the landscape, and then you combine them in post-production in Photoshop, for example. But another challenge was it that the moon is actually not that big. There are some days, of course, when the moon is closer to Earth and it appears bigger. You need to watch for those days, but still, it's not as big as sometimes we see in those online pictures where you have a nice landscape and this huge moon in the sky. But that's what I want to show you, how to do that. Because all those pictures were combined in Photoshop, just the picture they were taken took the picture just of the moon itself and the picture of the scenery separately and then just place the moon into the scenery. So click on the part 2 to see the Photoshop tutorial on how to do that.